Hey guys, Mariette Calumet Knits. I have a fun project for you today. This is my version of an Easter marshmallow bunny. So I really wanted to make these last year, but ran out of time. So this year I was determined to start early. And now I get to share this pattern with you so that you can make your Easter gifts early. So these bunnies measure approximately seven inches long. And I have made them in several bright colors using Big Twist Value yarn. The small bunnies are made with the Addy 22 needles machine, and the best part, waste yarn is not required. The large bunny is about 13 inches long, and I made him on my Addy 46 needles machine, again using Big Twist Value yarn. So let's jump right in and make this pink bunny. With your 22 needles machine, we'll make two tubes that are 35 rows each. So fold your tubes so that the tail is in the center of the tube. And then I'm going to cinch the ends a little bit. I don't want them closed all the way. I kind of want to make um, two rectangles. And by cinching the edges a little bit, it's easier to find the stitches for seaming. And I'll do that for both tubes. Now I'll place one tube on top of the other and we're going to seam the sides together using the mattress stitch. So I'm going to grab some extra yarn and a long tail. And I'll start seaming on one of the edges. And instead of going two bars at a time, which we normally do when we do the mattress stitch, I'm only going to go one bar at a time. This is because these bunnies are stuffed and I think the one bar at a time is a better seam for something that is going to be stretched. And I'll want to leave a long tail, oh, about a six inch tail. So there's a lot of tails um, in this project and we're gonna leave them long for seaming. And again, I'm picking up one bar on one tube and then I'm going to the other tube and picking up one bar. And you can see the way I'm holding these two tubes that I have the column of stitches that I want to seam together um, visible. And this makes it easier to stay within the two columns from the start to the end. So after a few inches of seaming, you'll want to pull on your working yarn to close that seam up. And then just continue picking up one bar at a time from each side. So I'm going to stop seaming when I get to about nine stitches from the edge. And just leave that long tail um, for later. We'll use it to seam up the bunny ears. So I just have a couple more stitches to do before I reach that nine stitch um, ending point. And then I'll zipper up my seam. And I'm opening that up just a little bit for later. And I'll fold this in half again and I'll seam the exact same way, going one bar at a time, starting at one edge, working my way to the other edge. And again, I will leave nine stitches um, for the bunny ears to seam later. Now that we have the two sides seamed up, let's work on the bunny ears. And you'll need a little bit of polyfill for this. And I mean just a little bit. And I'm gonna stuff this ahead of time. I find it easier than after it's been um, seamed up. So I'm gonna place a little bit inside one of the ears. And now I'm going to seam up the side of the bunny ear. And I'm going to use the tail from my seam. 
I know it's a mess with all these tails. So to begin, my tail is coming off the bottom, so I'm going to start on the top side here, and I'm going to go through the previous stitch. I'm going to pick that stitch up one more time, and then I'll pick up another one. So when I'm seaming the ears, I'm going to do two bars at a time. If you wanted to do one, that's fine. And then I'm going to go through the previous one um, on this side as well and then pick up one more stitch. And now I can do two bars at a time on each side till I reach the end. So one last stitch and I can pull on that working yarn to close that seam up. And then, again, I'm just going to leave this tail hanging for now, and I'll flip this over and do the other ear. And I'll do it the same process with a little bit of stuffing, and um, when we start to seam, I'll pick up one of the previous stitches along with a new stitch, and do that on both sides, and then I can just do two bars at a time. So here's my previous stitch and my new stitch, pull that through, same on the other side, previous stitch, sorry it's a little difficult to see, previous stitch and a new stitch, and then two bars on each side till we reach the end. And now I'll just pull on that working yarn to close up that seam. And by doing it this way, I really don't have a hole where the two ears um, split. You can see it looks pretty good there. So now we can work on closing up the top of the ears. So go ahead and cinch closed um, one of the ears the best that you can. And then what I like to do is kind of pick up a few more stitches along the edge to kind of make it more rounded at the top. So once I get those two stitches in, I can cinch it closed a little bit more. And then I'll take the seam tail and I'll tie these two together and then bury that tail inside the ear. And this is how it looks when we're finished with that one ear. And then we'll just repeat the process for the second ear. And now we're done with the two ears. So let's finish up the bottom. Again, we're still dealing with a lot of tails. I just keep them out of the way while I stuff the inside of the bunny. When I stuff the bunny, I try not to make him too round. Um, I think he looks better if he's more flat. And I'm just kind of seeing how the head's going to look when it's cinched, and then just keep adding more stuffing. When I'm happy with how this is looking, I'll pull on the drawstrings and close up the bottom portion here. Now there's two drawstrings. And once I get those closed up, what I'll do next is take the two seam tails and I'm going to tie these together gently. If you pull too hard um, you'll pull on that seam and it'll kind of make an indent on the bottom of the bunny. So just do a gentle knot and then bury those tails. So 
Now what I do is try and tighten up these drawstrings the best that I can. Try and make that hole as small as possible. Next, I'll pick up stitches with one of the tails, and I'm going to go all the way around that hole. So when I'm finished, I'm just going to pull on that yarn and close that hole up. And now I'm able to go ahead and make a knot and bury those tails. the main part of the body is now done. So we have the drawstring to add for shaping the head portion. I'll do that next and you'll want another long tail. And rather than picking up like every other leg of, a, of the stitches going around or picking up every other stitch going around, so what I'm going to do is pick up a stitch and then I'm going to pick up the stitch right above it. And then my next stitch is going to be one stitch over from our first stitch and then I'm going to pick up the stitch above that. So instead of picking up one stitch or all of the stitches in one row, I'm picking up all of the stitches in two rows and I'm alternating between rows. So I'm going the bottom row, then the top row, then back to the bottom, back to the top. And I'll do this all the way around. So this gives us a little bit different look. Um, you don't actually see the drawstring um, once we cinch this closed. Now it is a little bit harder to cinch closed and I pull on both tails at the same time from the back side. Once I'm satisfied with that, I can just go ahead and uh, make a knot and bury those tails. So now that that's done, we can create the little indents at the bottom of the ears. This is going to shape the head portion a little bit, and it's also going to help um, the ears kind of point out a little bit. So I'm going to take another piece of yarn. I'm going to go in from the side right through the base of the ears and out the other side. And then I'll go back the other direction going down a row of stitches first. I don't want to go through the same hole. And then I'll go right back through that same line one more time. So now I have a tail on each end and you just pull it just a little bit and it will indent those sides. When I'm satisfied with that, I will take one of the tails and move it to the other side where I can make a knot and bury that tail. So now we have our body complete. The only thing left to do is add the face. So I will use some black yarn. And um, again, I like long tails. I don't like fighting with short, short pieces of yarn. So go ahead and thread your needle. So I make the eyes and the nose with a French knot. And to do that, we start by inserting the needle from the back to the front and leaving a little bit of a tail. And then what we do is from the back to the front, we wrap the needle with the yarn, and I did four wraps. And then I'll stick the needle back in, not in the same place, but I'm going over to where the eye is going to be. And when you pull that through, it creates a little knot right there. So now I'll do this again. Wrapping it around from the back to the front, 
four times and then I'll insert it a little bit off from where I came out and move over to the next eye. And I'll do this one more time. Wrap the needle from the back to the front four times and insert it in. And this time I'm going to come out right where we started on the back side. So I pulled this through a little bit too far and now I need to back it out a little bit. Once I'm happy with how the eyes and the nose look, I can go ahead and make a knot on the back side and then bury those tails. Let's look at how to make the big bunny. But first, if you enjoyed this project so far, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So the big bunny was made on my Addy 46 needle machine and I did two tubes of 65 rows each. So the process is exactly the same. The only difference is I used 17 stitches from the end when I seamed up the two tubes. And for the eyes, I did the same process except I used velvet yarn. So thanks for checking out this project today and I'd love to see what you create. Tag me in social media at Calumet Knits. And check out some of these other circular knitting machine videos. Thanks for watching.